Welcome to Mastering the Wilderness, an instruction series designed to provide you with the knowledge and skills necessary to meet, master, and most importantly, enjoy the challenge of the wilderness. During the course of the series, we will be covering the means of travel, canoeing, and backpacking, how to read a map, and how to tell direction, with or without a compass. You will learn how to determine the weather, pre-trip planning, food, and equipment requirements, the necessary steps to establish a campsite, and the basics of survival. In all, you will learn everything necessary to venture into the wilderness with confidence. As a successful trip doesn't just happen, we now turn to the basics necessary for travel and living in the wilderness. In this part of the series, we'll cover the planning, needs such as food, equipment, and implementation. All are essential for an enjoyable and fulfilling experience. Let's start with the initial planning. There are a number of things you must consider. The distance, which will depend on the age, condition, and experience of those traveling, time allowed, type of terrain, and weather conditions. The latter will have a direct bearing on your food and clothing requirements. The area and route of travel can be selected from an abundance of information available. You can chart your course from topographical maps available from the United States and Canadian governments. Since clothing and sleep gear must be carried, they should be light and compact. While we will be dealing with clothing later, your sleeping bag should satisfy a range of temperature variances. These ranges are marked on quality product. As sleep is essential to your well-being, don't sacrifice quality for price. For shelter, select a tent large enough to accommodate all the occupants with room to spare. In bad weather, you may be confined for some time Assure the material is sturdy and the seams well stitched. In addition, it should be light in weight and compact for easy carriage. Before travel, check it carefully for any loose seams, tears, or holes. If it has pegs and supports, make sure you have an ample supply as well as extra rope. Consider a fly which rests over the top to deflect rain and moisture you'll need a netted entrance to keep out insects. An entrance fly can be used in inclement weather to cook under or close over for added protection. Last but not least is food. Proper selection is your assurance of good health and enjoyment. While your provisions must be nourishing and filling, remember to keep them light and compact for ease of carriage you'll discover an unlimited variety of pre-proportioned and packaged lightweight product in supermarkets and specialty stores. It can be dry, dehydrated, concentrated, or freeze-dried. Avoid perishables, cans, and bottles as they only add bulk and weight. Plan menus to assure proper nourishment. This is the source of your strength stamina, and good health. A few pointers on proper food selection. Assure a balance of proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. In colder weather, allow for more fats and carbohydrates. Provide an adequate quantity and variety of vitamins. Be aware a number of dehydrated and freeze-dried foods have a high starch content. Being a cause of irregularity, Compensate by providing for an abundance of fiber. The number of calories has a direct bearing on the quantity of food you need. 
While requirements vary with the body weight, under normal living conditions, an average person requires approximately 3,000 calories per day. Allowing for the physical activity of tripping, increase the number by 1,000 for the average person and 1,500 to 2,000 for growing adolescents. While packaged foods state the number of persons served, this is based on average and not tripping appetites. Accordingly, allow for extra servings. It's better to have too much food than not enough. At the same time, provide for extra meals. This assures sufficient quantity when food is lost or destroyed, or if you do not reach your destination on time. To stimulate appetites, provide for variety in the meals. While breakfast and dinner should be substantial, lunches usually eaten on the move can be moderate. Carry plenty of sweets for between meal snacks. They will restore depleted or lost energy. Avoid junk foods. Concentrate on natural products such as raisins, nuts, and sunflower seeds. In fact, you'll find it is far cheaper to mix your own supply. Also provide liberally for staples like peanut butter, jam, cereals, and biscuits. These satisfy hunger when a planned meal is not filling. To avoid litter, don't carry bottles or glass containers. Allow for cans only when necessary, and after use, crush, burn, and carry them out. It is far better to empty the contents into reusable plastic containers. In conclusion, provide a variety of appetizing, nutritious, and filling meals. When traveling in hot weather, supplement diet with extra salt. This compensates for body loss through perspiration. You will also find sour candies provide energy and yet reduce thirst. Now let's look at your equipment needs. The following are necessary. An axe or hatchet in a sheath. An ample supply of matches in waterproof cases. A flashlight for emergencies and candles for light. A well-stocked first aid kit. Strong thread and needles to repair clothing, sleeping gear, or a tent. Strong, lightweight rope, which for ease of carriage can be tied to the outside of a pack. A Prima stove for extreme weather conditions, emergency heating, or when there is a ban on open fires. Mm -hmm. A small portable grill. Cooking utensils, with one pot large enough to wash dishes and eating utensils. Eating implements. Light tear resistant plastic sheeting for a cooking shelter or to cover equipment in bad weather. Either a pocket or hunting knife. Fire starter for extreme weather conditions and emergencies. This includes sterno, hexamine tablets, or Varsol soaked sawdust. A map of the travel route, preferably in a waterproof case and a compass. A folding saw. Light line and hooks for fishing. A liquid or paste insecticide, not pressure spray, if insects are in season. And finally, if room allows, a reflector oven and a trench shovel. If traveling by water, carry an extra paddle and life jacket for each canoe. These can be tied to the craft for ease and carriage over portages. When there is any question of drinking water being available, carry a quantity of liquid in a canteen. Now a few words on clothing. While essential for comfort and well-being, the necessity of carriage limits the quantity Two primary considerations will be prevailing weather conditions and insects. If traveling in hot weather, 
you'll need protection from insects everywhere. Clothing should be light in color and weight and loose fitting. Under cool or cold temperature conditions, clothing must be heavier for warmth. Wool is an excellent component as it has great capacity to retain body heat even when damp. When choosing clothing, allow for the wearing of several articles in layers. Called layering, this allows it to be removed when physical activity creates body heat and replaced to retain the heat when activity ceases. One point worth remembering. Don't be deceived by cloud cover in hot weather. The intense rays of the sun penetrate clouds, so wear protective clothing. You carry all your gear in packs. If a pack is heavy, you should have a tump line. This fits over the forehead and relieves some of the pressure on the shoulders and back. While frames are fine for backpacking, don't carry them in canoes. All gear, except the tent and extra rope, should go in packs. As they must be carried, maximize the contents and minimize the number. Pack light and compact. The tent can be tied to the top, while rope can be tied to the side. Try to pack clothing, sleeping gear, and personal items separate from food. Pack your food so the first meal is at the top with those following in succession to the bottom. Each food item should be packaged individually and securely. Waterproof and airtight containers will avoid leakage or deterioration. Place cooking equipment, eating utensils, and staple food items together so they are readily available at all times. If there are a number of packs, flag the one with the medical kit. This will assure it is immediately available in case of an emergency. Test all your gear and make certain it is in good repair. Check carefully that everything necessary has been included. A few points on personal conditioning. While an extended wilderness trip is fun, it's not a walk in the park. Get prepared by building up to it gradually. Assure good physical condition before you start. That concludes our look at pre-trip planning. We have covered the basic considerations of distance, time, terrain, and weather, as well as requirements for shelter, sleep, nourishment, and body comfort. Remember the principle of layering. We have reviewed basic equipment needs and how to pack for travel. We are now ready to move on to tripping itself.